Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Nought be all else to me, save that thou art. save that thou art thou my best thought in the day and the night waking or sleeping thy presence my light the words of that wonderful hymn which have closed our evening service which has concluded a little while ago this sunday evening 28th of june and our first full month of services after the return from the lockdown it's been wonderful to meet again today Waking or sleeping. In Psalm 4, we have a psalm which refers to being on your bed at night. Be angry and do not sin. Ponder in your own hearts on your beds and be silent. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. It is the end of another Sunday evening and in this uh, little devotional I'm going to share it some reflections on the morning. But before I do so, I'll close with the evening prayer. I'll pray the evening prayer. I invite you to join with me in prayer as I do so. Let us pray. Lord, lighten our darkness, I pray. And in your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night for the love of your only Son, our Saviour. Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. As I think of the uh, morning, I'm often, I come to this time of night and sometimes recall the words, that wonderful little hymn, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Indeed, we sang the hymn, Great is thy faithfulness. Uh, both this morning and this evening. In this evening's service, I uh, shared some words from Galatians chapter 1, verse 10. I'm quite aware that there are some who are unable to join with us. And so I share these words before I move on to talk about the morning and a a little daily devotional uh, based on the Bard and the Bible. But the uh, words that I looked at this evening were from Galatians chapter 1, in particular, verse 10 where Paul says, For am I now seeking the approval of man or of God? Or am I trying to please man? If I was still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. And we talked about who it is that we are serving and who we're seeking to please. Are we seeking to merely be people pleasers or servants of the living God, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ? Thomas Wolseley The uh, bishop once remarked, If I had served God as faithfully as man, I had been better rewarded and not forsaken in my distress. There is indeed a lot of wisdom in that statement. Being a servant of Christ is far sweeter than being a slave to man's opinion. The reward of being a servant of Christ is far, far superior to any reward we may obtain from any man. Indeed, as we serve the Lord Jesus Christ, and it's only indeed by serving him that on that final day we may hear those wonderful words of approval, words which our hearts so desperately long to hear. Well done, good and faithful servant.
find in the Bible. We return to the book of uh, Shakespeare's play Hamlet. But look, the morn in russet mantle clad walks o'er the dew of yon eastern hill. The tragedy of Hamlet, Prince of Den Den Denmark, that's its official title. Of course, normally we just call it Hamlet, as it is usually called. It's William Shakespeare's longest play and his most celebrated tragedy. In the opening scene, three men see a ghost on the castle walls, a portentous figure that seems so like the king who has recently died. The ghost appears to open his mouth to speak, but the sound of a rooster's crow arrests him, and he fades into the night. Horatio, one of the amazed trio, notes that, and here is the quote I quoted before, he notes that the morn in russet mantle clad walks o'er the dew of yon high eastern hill. And so he is certain the ghost will not return this night. When morning comes, they believe, ghosts depart. And even more common belief in Shakespeare, Shakespeare's day than in ours. Here's a little note down below. He notes an old tradition held that Shakespeare's finest performance as an actor himself was as King Hamlet's ghost in this play, Hamlet. Well, Hamlet is fiction, of course, uh, but uh, Bob Hostetler, in his little book, The Bard and the Bible, goes on to uh, make a link with the scriptures, and it's to Psalm 5, the psalm after Psalm 4, which I referred to just a moment ago, Psalm 5 that he turns. He says, But there is a true and living king, a portentous figure, who willingly and dependably shows himself morning after morning to those who watch for him. The psalmist referred to him. Psalm 5 verse 3. My voice shalt thou hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee, and will look up. Here the psalmist employs the figure of an archer. I will direct my prayer unto thee. Aiming his prayer like a, a notched arrow to fire, releasing it to heaven looking up to follow its progress. A man or woman who prays like that each morning will see the king and know him and be known to him. So as we come to the dawn of a new week, I'm presuming you probably won't be watching this on Sunday evening, so perhaps it'll be Monday morning. What prayers, what arrows of prayer will you release this day? I'm going to close by reading Psalm 5 and then pray a prayer from the prayer book which I used in our evening prayers tonight. A prayer uh, along the lines that our hearts indeed would be directed in love towards God and his service. Here's a psalm of David, Psalm 5. Give ear to my words, O Lord, consider my groaning. Give attention to the sound of my cry, my King and my God, for to you do I pray. O Lord, in the morning you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. For you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil may not dwell with you. The boastful shall not stand before your eyes. You hate all evildoers. You destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful man. But I, through the abundance of your steadfast love, will enter your house. I will bow down toward your holy temple in the fear of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before me. For there is no truth in their mouth. Their inmost self is destruction. Their throat is an open grave. They flatter with their tongue. Make them bear their guilt, O God. 
Let them fall by their own counsels. Because of the abundance of their transgressions, cast them out, for they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy and spread your protection over them, that those who love your name may exult in you. For you bless the righteous, O Lord. You cover him with favour as with a shield. It certainly was wonderful to be able to meet together here once again with brothers and sisters in the Lord, both morning and evening at St Stephen's Bellevue Hill. And for those who are unable to be with us, be assured that you've been in our prayers, even as we mentioned a number by name, uh, in our services uh, during our prayer times. And uh, particularly those who for uh, health or other reasons are unable to join with us, just want to express our ongoing thought and prayer of you and how much we are certainly missing you and hope that you'll be able to join with us in the Lord's good way and time. Or if that not be the case, be able to come here in person, that we'll be able to come and see you and share together. In the words of Scripture, the holy words, words which encourage and strengthen us and comfort us, and also to pray prayers. And may indeed this week be a week where you shoot forth those prayers, those arrows to the Lord. And so I close with this prayer, which is a prayer for love towards God. Let us pray. Gracious God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward you, that loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you, this night and always. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. Amen.